Can you tell us briefly how it was that you became a designer? What was it that drew you to theatre? I went to art college and did fine art painting. Um, and I, there was a David Hockney exhibition um, who painted the stage when I was at art college and I went to see that and then madly, instead of going to do an MA in painting, I applied to this theatre um, course in London and um, built this model, but I didn't realise that you had to build the model that is 1 to 25 scale, so everything's like 25 times smaller than real life, but I didn't know about that, so I just built this massive thing and had to hire a transit van <laughs> and turned up and this woman said, oh, have you ever heard of a scale ruler? And I said, no. <laughs> And she said, and then this guy said, it's fine. And on the interview panel, he said, that's the sort of thing we can teach you, but what you've done is good. So then I went, I went on to a MA in theatre design. Then I got a job at the Citizens Theatre as an assistant. And then um, went freelance, really. So. so Ibsen's Ghost is a really significant text. It's full of dramatic tension. What was it that drew you to this text and designing for this text? Um, well, I've already done Ghosts, the original Ibsen's Ghosts, um, for English Touring Theatre, but that was a very traditional um, version of it, um, with sort of turn of the century costumes. Um, but this adaptation, when, when, you say, when someone says, do you want to do ghosts? You go, yeah, I can do ghosts, I've done ghosts. But then you get the script by Megan and it's completely it's different, really. It's very, I mean, it's sort of based on ghosts, but it's quite a radical um, rewrite. So I didn't really know what I was going to get until I got the script. Um, but I think they've updated it to be the sort of political skeletons in the closet and all that is you see in the papers now so I think it just that attracted me when I saw the script that it was a very modern take on a very old-fashioned play really. So when you were creating your design for ghosts was there a particular section of text or a character that you were drawn to? Um, no I don't think there was really. I think um, there seemed to be this sort of trying to destroy the evidence of paper trail, of trying to hide the home and the this and the that. So I think that that's where we thought of putting shredded paper instead of snow, just having that around as a landscape to sort of suggest they were trying to they were living on top of evidence that they tried to destroy. I think that was like the first the starting point. And Andy just, I think he wanted quite open, no doors, quite unnaturalistic. So it became, it be, sort of grew out of itself really. But I think the shredded paper thing was the initial sort of metaphor for highlands and winter and snow. And so it looked like, it looked like that really. When it comes to starting your research process, is there a way that you like to approach that? Does it adapt at all from show to show or is there something that you follow um, strictly? Um, it sort of adapts really. I mean, it also adapts. Well, when I started, there wasn't an internet and um, I used to have to go to the library and take a book out and photocopy it and then colour photocopy it in a shop and. Mm -hmm. Whereas now you can, you've got Photoshop and you can Google stuff. And so that's completely changed in the last sort of since 90, 1990 or something. I don't know when, when did internet arrive? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, I remember that happening and going, oh my God, I don't need to go to the bloody art school anymore. <laughs> and so I think now you can just go, oh, shredded paper. Um, installation and there's, mm -hmm. you can just get a hundred images of art installations of people that have used shredded paper and you go, well, that's interesting, that's interesting. So you're quite, mm -hmm. 
you're kind of quite eclectic of what you're trying to grab from other people, other people's photos or other people's images or, mm. and then, so yeah, you, it's pretty much, pretty like you just sit, you're at home or in your studio just doing it on your own really. Whereas before you used to mm -hmm. have to go wandering about a lot more. Is there a research element that you go to first? Is it texture, is it colour, is it shape? What is it that pulls you in? Um, I think it's like a mood, you just get a mood really of the play and you think that needs to be dark or that needs to be modern or that needs to be outdoors or there's a feel of this and it doesn't necessarily have to be a real thing it could just be I think it feels really like there's lots of glass or do you know mm -hmm. so you, I think you just I was always taught when I was at theatre college to read serve the play and as long as you serve the play then you're doing a good job as if you're trying to get your name mentioned then you're not doing a good job so to not over, to not take over really, mm -hmm. just to ser serve the play so that the play can do what it's meant to do. So I try and do that really, but sometimes you do go, oh, I just, you know, there's all my massive pink shark. <laughs> and then the director will go, yeah. Because like for this, for example, uh, there's a Salvador Dali sofa of a pair of lips. Mm -hmm. And I said, I emailed Andy a picture of it and said, what about this for the sofa? So that when the guy goes to sleep on it, he's like sleeping in a pair of lips. Mm -hmm. And he went, no, that's too much. Mm -hmm. So that, and that's the end of that idea. Yeah. So then, you know, so it's kind of, you're constantly having a little dialogue with someone saying, what about this, what about that? And then you end up with what you end up with. Can you tell us about your collaboration with the show's director, Andy Arnold? What sort of conversations was it that you were having? It was tricky. It was good, but it was tricky because the script had I got very I, I had to basically start work on a half page synopsis of what Megan was writing because she was still doing the draft. And then the first draft came and that then that changed quite a lot to the next one. So it was like a bit working on shifting sand, really, because every time you come up with something, the play end changed, the whole ending changed. And, yeah. But um, I think we just had a few chats, really, and I think Dave, the production manager, was in on them and was helpful, saying what's practical and what isn't practical. And, you know, because you get a budget, you know what, you, from experience, you know how far that money can go, really. Mm. So you know you can't do something over the top, really high design of hydraulics or anything. But you, I think I think we just sort of had a chat and came up with something together, really. That he said, "I'm seeing it like this, quite open and modern." And so I went away and tried to come up with something that suited that, really. So what was your biggest challenge when you were designing this show? Um, what, what sort of challenges did you come up against and, and how have you tried to overcome them? Uh, is there too many? Yeah, there's a lot. Everything is a little challenge, really. But I think the window that flies in and um, becomes, becomes that, that's tricky for that to um, flip down. I think a stag's, coming up with a dead stag is tricky for it to be realistic enough to not be comedy. Because um, I think there's nothing worse than a naff prop that people will just go, oh, that's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Why do they bother doing that? So I think that's going to be tricky. Um, Would you say that? Collaboration is one of the ways that you overcome these challenges. Yeah, I think it's sort of a it's a funny it's a cross between collaborating and sort of compromising really because people will say, oh, we can't afford that. Mm -hmm. Can you have that? Or 
if we can't have that fridge, can you have this fridge? And before you, you're just trying to not let it get watered down, really, but also trying to understand that that's going to have you have to do that, really, because you can't really afford a two thousand pound fridge. This is forever the trouble for designers. Yeah, so it's yeah. it's like a cross between collaborating and sometimes you know so other, sometimes someone will say, well, "What about this?" and you'll go, "That's a brilliant idea." You know, because it's not just about, when you're designing it, it's not just about you as a designer, because an actor will come and say, well, I think I should have a bow tie. And you go, oh, that's a good idea. And I think it's about being, not being too blinkered and going, I'm the designer. Mm -hmm. You can't, you're not allowed an opinion. You I think it's good when you go, oh, actually, do you, if you want, like, brown and white jazz shoes, that's quite a good idea, really. So let's go for that. So I think it's a funny little, you have to find your own little way really without, hold on to, hold on to it enough, but be free enough to um, take on other people's ideas really. Thinking about presenting your ideas and sharing your concept, are there any tips that you could give somebody um, to present their design? I'm the, I'm terrible. <laughs> I, I'm the worst. I mean, I, I don't like, being here now, being filmed, and I like being in the background, so... Um, Would you say that you leave a lot of your presentation to your models? Well, I think what or? someone, when I was at college, someone said to me that your model is like a contract. So the more detail you put into that, the less people will be able to say, oh, but you didn't tell us about that. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a really detailed chair or a fridge or whatever, and then you can say, no, but look, I, not that it becomes a big argument ever, oh. but you can say, look, this is the chair I want, so then it, the, it's, it's a lot clearer, it's really. Nice agree, yeah. Whereas I've, yeah. seen, I've seen some models and, um, where the door is just like, somebody snipped it with a bit of a uh, pair of scissors and just folded it back, and you go, what sort of door is that? Is that a stable door? Is that a panel door? Or mm. You can't just cut a flap out of a bit of cardboard. You need yeah. to make a door. So I, I would say that's how, um, that and the technical drawings that you have to do um, is, how you, is how I sort of present my ideas, really. But it's, it's very strange, really, because I was um, appalling at maths at school, <laughs> I was about to retake, retake my O level twice. And, um, but now you, I, I use maths all the time, yeah. so it's really bizarre, really. I think, I think that's one of the things that surprises people about design. There's a, lot of, yeah. there's a lot of maths and angles and geometry going on, but if, I, if my maths teacher knew that I was what I did now, <laughs> he would be like, oh my God, <laughs> how on earth did you manage to do that? <laughs> So yeah, I think that technical drawings and making as detailed a model is the way you can you. present your ideas best, maybe. Yeah. What advice could you give to someone that was thinking about a career in detail design or would just like to know more? Um, I would say go and see as much theatre and um, get right to a theatre and ask um, if you can shadow someone and have a look and because I don't think I didn't really know that that was a job that job existed really my my art teacher said you're quite good at art you should go to art college and that was as far as I went really I didn't know then so then I I wrote to theatres and said can I come stand in the wings and watch and every so often someone would say you can um, but I would say go and see theatre, go and read plays and think, of, just think how you would put that on the stage really. I think reading is, reading plays is quite important really, working out how that works. Because um, it, it's just quite different to novels where there's, there's no description, mm -hmm. not, they're not saying oh the, the winter was really leafy and the wind blew, you know, mm -hmm. it's just dialogue. And it just, I think, to learn how to read a play and imagine how that is, that's a good, I would say that's a good way of working. Because mm -hmm. you don't really do that, and no one really reads plays apart mm -hmm. from 
people in the theatre. So, um, yeah, that's that. Well, Great. Thanks so much, Neil. That's all right. Thanks.